Welcome, welcome to another episode of Black Star Still Rising and sponsored by the Black Star Project in the memory of Philip Jackson, its founder, who said it very succinctly, educate or die. That still holds true. And keeping on with that tradition is his baby sister. And that's Gloria Smith, who is executive director of Black Star Project and makes this possible. And as many of our viewers know, we do this all the time to make sure that the people that need to be credited, we don't run out of time. So we're going to give them their dues right now. Start with our studio producers, that's Imani Payne and Rocio Santos here. Wave. No, you, they can't see you, but they can see me. We're waving at you. Very good waving back, all right? And then we have to thank, uh, of course, uh, Black Star. We have to acknowledge uh, Lisa Dawn Taylor, who is the editor founder of the Current magazine, Current South Shore Current, West of the Rhine Current, and the West Side Current, who makes part of this possible. One of our big supporters is Cy Lewis. Executive Director of Meadows Eastside, uh, one of the community stalwarts that are doing so much for seniors and everybody in the South Shore community. And I think I've hit everything, everybody that didn't, but if I missed something, oh yes, Alicia Henry, who is the Executive Director or Regional Director at the favorite site that we have to wave and shout out to, the Atlas Center at 75th and Craigier in Chicago. So I think I've made all the, the uh, shout outs I need to make. And now the introduction, the introduction here for Vanessa uh, Bird. Good evening, Vanessa, everyone. go ahead. Good evening, everyone. I'm Vanessa Bird, CFO from Lionheart Hospice. And it is a pleasure to be here. Thank you for the invite. Oh, glad to have you. You had great recommendations. Well, thank you. Okay. <laughs> Tell us a little bit of what the mission is of Lionheart. Well, the mission of Lionheart is to provide physical, emotional, social, and spiritual support to terminally ill patients and their families. Um, basically, we are a hospice agency that provides services in homes, nursing home, and facilities. We also provide support for the caregivers as well, which is very important. Uh, we have four different levels of care. We have routine care, respite care, acute general inpatient care, and continuous care. And we're going to hit one of the things that not too many want to talk about. Many of us, now raise your hand. How many people want out there, you folks at Atlas, how many people want to go to heaven? Raise your hand. How many want to die? I know you're going to put your <laughs> hands down. Everybody wants to go to heaven, but nobody wants to die. But that is one of the concerns that Lionheart talks about. Exactly. It's a concern that's got to be addressed, and we're going to address it. We've got the right person here for addressing some of the issues that have to are concerned with the quality of life for seniors, the quality of life, and also the end of life. End of life care. Care, okay. Which is very important. And one of the uh, conversations we had is that healthy people die as well. I don't believe it. <laughs> oh, my God. I could be here uh, one day and healthy, you know, and I die, and my, my daughters and my sons, they might not know what to do with me. They won't know what to do. Tell them what they should be concerned So with. the first thing that we should be taking care of, not just for our seniors and our veterans, our mom and our dad, but anyone, everyone, we need to get life insurance policies what? in place. Life insurance. Right, get your pencils get your and pen. paper. I told you about that. Write these things. <laughs> these are checklists. You're going to be quizzed after the show. Right. Life insurance. And I've often had the occasion where a hospice patient, the beneficiary, preceded them in death. Preceded them in death. In death. death. The caregiver. What happened then? The things fall apart? It has to go to probate court and you had to go through all the red tape. So on your life insurance policy, make sure it's updated. Make sure you have at least two beneficiaries on there. The second thing that you need. Let's, let's um, emphasize that a little mm -hmm. bit because I know many folks my age, younger, of course, especially mm -hmm. younger folks, don't want to have these difficult conversations. We Talk must about have. that and, and what your experience has been with that. 
Oh, mama, you're going to live forever. Oh, I don't want to hear this. Oh, I'm don't too busy. Don't want to talk about that. We'll go with nothing. Right. Or mama or daddy might not want to give out the information because they don't want to show favoritism. Or what about they want to show they got that bank account on the side? Oh. <laughs> <laughs> we'll talk about that. That's another serious situation. <laughs> we With Alzheimer's, dementia, cancer, mm -hmm. stroke, it's very important that we realize that you must have someone over that you trust over your right. finances. So um, we've seen it where the mother and the father will have not one bank, not two banks, but three or more banks. They have safety deposits. They have money stashed in their closet, underneath the mattress, and the dresser. Sofa, okay. Uh, and the sofa everywhere. Right, right. So we need to make sure, mom, dad, that you disclose this information. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It's very important. Know where the safety deposit box Know what, uh, um, get the account number. Make sure someone is on the account mm -hmm. because otherwise it's going to go to probate. They have to be power of have a power. Okay, there are a couple of ways that you have to have or need power of attorney. Tell our audience some of the ways that power of attorney is important, why you should do it now. Right, you should, everyone should have it done. Um, the power of attorney is very critical to circumvent probate court. And you could easily go to the Illinois Secretary of State and download the forms and have it notarized. Um, if you want a will. Stop there. Stop uh -huh. there. Talk about why it's important to have probate instead of that estate or the, what you'd like to pass on to the family. Mm -hmm. Why it's important to do these things ahead of time or have an attorney that uh, lines up a probate situation for you. Right. You don't want to go to probate court. You don't want to go. Probate court costs you money. And it delays it delays your funds. Distribution of the, the distribution funds of the funds, okay. right? So the Cook County has put a um, it's an instrument called TODI. What does it stand for? Oh, transfer of death instrument. Okay. Don't quote me on that, but it's TODI, and you could go straight to the uh, Cook County Assessor's Office, pay fifty dollars, and any real property that you have, that will go to that person that you allocated on that instrument. Okay. Now listen to that. This is important. That for fifty dollars, whatever $50. you might get for six pack or bottle of whatever. Right. Use that money. Go ahead. Especially if you don't have the funds to put the house in trust okay. or your property in trust. The second thing that you have to realize is that when you put that information down for the uh, transfer of death instrument, that person must be in the right frame of mind. Frame oh. of mind. When you say frame of mind, the person not cognitive who, impaired. Okay, okay. Not cognitive impaired. So that's impaired. why you want to do some of these things early, and not wait until you're an octogenarian like me, or a septuagenarian, mm -hmm. or a sexagenarian, or the. Ooh, that's I could roll these <laughs> off my tongue these days. And centurion. That's where I want to be one day. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. We all want to get there, don't we? We want to get there. And we, we want, and we want to have a good life. A don't quality we? of talk about the quality of life and what you've experienced with the people that you administer to. Quality of life is very subjective. So let's say, for instance, if a person smoked a twelve pack of cigarettes, drunk twelve pa twelve beers, that's their quality of life. You know right? some of them people, huh? I do. You I see, do. I do. You see something come across your table? Yes, your desk. I yes. do. I know some of them. Mm -hmm. Or you might have um, the other person that ate healthy, exercised every day, drank water, you know. Um, hydrated. Wait, right, yeah. hydrated water, and that's another quality of life. So the quality of life is subjective. It's what you put into yourself, you feed into yourself. So we're gonna talk about in the life care. Mm -hmm. In the life care is bringing dignity. It's bringing conflict resolution. Oh, it's, we want to talk about. We're gonna hit that with the conflict. You like that conflict resolution? Yes, yes that's yeah. an interesting one for folks. Some of you have experienced it. Tell me the truth. Yes, yeah. I know you have. Right, that conflict resolution is serious. Um, I think I had um, told you the story about the 98 year old woman who had a sister mm -hmm. 96 years old. Hadn't okay. spoke to her sister since she was 10 years old. I can't believe. Tell her, tell her audience why. You told me that story. It's just It was over story. a pair of earrings. It Ten was over a pair of 10 years. And she was in there in the 90s, and she held that against her sister, sister. for all those years. Almost a century. Uh huh. And didn't speak to her sister. But you know what? 
you, you said there's some things that you need to deal with to cope with something like that. I think one of the things that you said, don't miss the opportunity what? Fill in the to rest. To say I love you. Say it again. To say I love you. Before you go to bed. Before you go to bed, every time you end a phone call, when you enter a room, when you exit a room, those three simple words mean so much, and you don't know how to edify or how to uplift somebody. Make it a practice to say, I love you, because you don't know when it's that last, that last time you're going to hear or see that person. And they need to be able to remember that they after you remembered. pass on, right. that they left you with that, and you left them with that feeling right. before, you, before you went away. And it's so easy. I love you. I love you, too. See? I'm so <laughs> It's so Somebody goes, easy. You might be whispering about right. it, but I don't know. <laughs> exactly. But those three words, they mean so much. And when you have a person that's in the end of life care, saying I love you and, and reminiscing and pulling out the photo albums and talking to that mm -hmm. person, not only it makes that person feel valued, but it brings them to know that they were loved and that they invested in their family, they invested in their community. Mm -hmm when it has someone to say, I love you. It doesn't take much. But you told me, you told me three special words, and I, I have notes on that. You said, mm -hmm. prepare, forgive, and atonement. Yes. Can you address that a little bit and how you've experienced that with your, your clientele? Well, preparing is, is stated, making sure that your affairs are in order. Make sure that your children, I think, uh, make sure they have a med your Medicare card, your bank statements, your pension all of your information, that is part of preparation. Um, you might want to downsize because if a person um, starts to decline, it's very difficult for them to get up the stairs. So a ranch style house, uh, you see a lot of our seniors, you know, going to a smaller house mm -hmm. or uh, a one level house, mm -hmm. okay? That's pre preparation. The next thing is you want to have atonement, anything if you haven't spoke to somebody in years, pick up that phone, mm -hmm. check on them, say I love you. Mm -hmm. Have that, that time with them and say, you know, I forgive you for all the things. Please forgive me. Please forgive me too. That's yeah, right. right. Because you don't want to close your eyes the next day and you open your eyes and, and it's the day of judgment, right? Yes. yes. So you want to have that opportunity. If you ought somebody, ask them for forgiveness because when you're on that bed, when that person is on that deathbed, they are so constricted on how their emotions are, you know, did I do mm -hmm. right by this person? And right now, the only thing that you should be focusing on is their higher being, really. Because I know those thoughts come through your mind. You know, yeah. when you talked about preparation, uh, my sister died a couple of years ago. I'm sorry to hear that. She was 103. That's a good thing. She was 103, and I'm just hoping that I'm going to be part of that. That, that part of our genes has been passed on. But my sister had very assiduously prepared for her passing. Everything was in, in order. My sister lived in Ocala, Florida, and I would go down there two or three times a year to visit mm -hmm. her. And it was just a smooth transition. I didn't know she was going to die until about two days before. And she died of COVID. She was probably in that first oh, wave wow. of COVID. But when I did the funeral preparation, she had laid, she thought so much of me that she laid everything out. I only had to, to appear there. Wow. The only thing I had to do was get a death certificate that I could use for to pay for the funeral and things like that. Right. But she had all that set out. I think many of us need to know because we don't know when that angel of death is going to come by. No. We need to think about those we leave behind. We need to minimize, if we can, even though we know that they can take care of business. Yes. We need to minimize it so that your wishes, the things that you really want to happen when you leave, and we're going to talk a little bit about that, mm -hmm. how you should lay out things and what things you should lay out for those who are there after you. Go ahead right. and talk about that a little bit. Please. So one of the things, we, I, we spoke of PLST or DNR, Okay, with the do not resuscitate, that is giving them your family. You're telling them, yay, I want chest compressions. Nay, I don't want chest compressions. Chest compressions, what? That's what the CPR. Okay. Okay. Um, I want to be on life support. No, I don't want to be on life support. I want to get um, enteral feedings, two feedings to sustain my life, or no, I don't want to feed. You want to fight rage, rage. 
until the dawn. Right. Do, do not go gently into that sweet night. Right. Rage against it. That's what many Ar people do. Go ahead. Right. And articulate what mm -hmm. you want. If you want to continue with chemo, if you want to continue with dialysis, articulate that because that directs the care. So for hospice, generally, we don't use, uh, we don't do tube feeding. We don't do chemo. Um, chemo we People don't do. People who are in hospice. Right. Okay. That get, stops. Get the distinction. Because yes. those are all life sustaining. Mm -hmm. um, those are all life sustaining. So we don't do um, chest compressions. We let you die naturally. Um, dialysis, okay. no. Blood transfusions, chemo. Those are all life sustaining mechanisms. Hospice does symptom control. So if the person is having constipation, we could say constipation, can't we? Let me see. Is that all right, Rosie? <laughs> okay. She says okay. She said okay. All right. Go ahead. If they have an anxiety problem, if they're having difficult breathing, if they're having um, uh, pain, pain is number one. I am. I hear it so many times from my black and brown people. I'm waiting on Jesus to come get me. <laughs> Excuse oh, me. Yes. I don't mean. To I'm waiting that. on Allah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, I'm waiting on a higher being to yes. come get me. Mm -hmm. So I don't want to be hosp I don't want to be on hospice. Hospice in Latin terms means hospitality. Okay. That's it. Hospice. No hospice agency. No doctor can tell you there is no time of death on your forehead or a tag on your toe. I've had uh, people on hospice since night uh, since 2020. That's three years at least. Exactly. Okay. Yes. Okay. Exactly. So as long as they continue to show a decline, uh, we're able to service. But when they're stable and they're improving, mm -hmm. which I do see a lot of my patients mm -hmm. improving and they're stable. That means we could give them the option to revoke their services or we might discharge their services, the hospice agency. So again, when you come into hospice, it's symptom management. It's about that pain. It's about your mm -hmm. oxygenation. It's about your anxiety. It's about the, uh, the chaplain, the medical social worker, the nurse, our medical doctor. You have a lot of services. And guess who pays for that? State. State pays for it, okay. Medicaid and Medicare pays so for it. So some of these things that are available don't have to come out of their pockets. No, it doesn't come out of their pockets. We even provide all of the um, durable medical equipment. So if they need a hospital bed, a Hoyer lift, bedside table, a Broda chair. Broda whatever. chair, what is that? A Broda chair is one that's like a recliner. We could raise the Broda chair up to the, the height of the bed and move the patient over and have them mm -hmm. sit over and look at us on TV. Okay. Yeah. You mentioned one thing, it was it was humorous in a way, but you know it happens in different things. Uh, the medications that people in hospice get or have available. To, some family members have been known to abscond. Uh, so, uh, we call it <laughs> suspicion of diversion. Say that again. Suspicion, suspicion of, of diversion. diversion. Leave my medicine on <laughs> Right. Yeah, so go ahead. because you have class two, you have narcotics okay. uh, for the pain because the pain could be intensified, okay. especially if that mm -hmm. person is a cancer patient. Mm -hmm. And so we had to be able to entrust this medication with their caregiver, someone that is responsible, because the main thing is to keep that loved one out of pain. So on you you have to be the one to identify that person who is responsible in your life. There's always one in the family, usually, hopefully, mm -hmm. there's one in the family, and they have to willingly be, be ready to take on that and have that discussion or talk, as you say. Mm -hmm. What things somebody who maybe sense they're gonna need some extraordinary care and may be going into, a, if you're cognitive enough, to uh, be aware of where you are physically. And most people know their bodies, but go ahead and talk about that if you can. It depends on diagnoses. For hospice, mm -hmm. you have to have a doctor, pretty much a primary physician that's gonna refer you to hospice. Uh, that's the order. Then he's going, he or she is going to put a hospice diagnosis, such as the Lou Gehrig cancer, um, Alzheimer's, um, kidney failure. It's a plethora of trans. It's plethora of diseases that is until transition. And until some you of die. them more physical, like Lou Lou Gehrig disease. Mm -hmm. That's for sure is going to take you away, right? Mm -hmm. It's only a question of when. The cognitive part, 
the uh, uh, Alzheimer's and those things, mm -hmm. there may be a slower pace on it, that. Yes. So talk about, about that, what happened during that period where folks maybe don't, it's not just a falling off the table. Right. It could be something subtle. And around this time is when I get more phone calls. Around the holidays? Around the holidays, Tell most definitely. Tell about the reason for that. The, the reason, reason is it's yeah. because the children and the grandchildren are coming home to grandmama or big mama's mm -hmm. house, mm -hmm. and they're noticing things that they have not noticed before. Mm -hmm. And you might start noticing that you don't smell the turkey. And this is a true incident. Mm -hmm. You don't smell the turkey. You ask him, big mama, where is the turkey? Big Mama says it's in the oven. Uh -huh. They go in there to turkey. check the turkey to see if the oven is on, and guess what? There's no turkey in the oven. Not even. They did just put it in there and forgot to turn it on. There is no turkey in the no oven. No turkey, period. Guess where the turkey is? In the freezer. In the dryer. Oh! <laughs> <laughs> in the dryer. Wait a <laughs> I shouldn't be laughing. No, this is a true story. <laughs> okay. So these are peculiar <laughs> things that the family members like. Okay, we need to pay mm, pay a I little bit more yeah. attention to grab to of, big mama. A lot yeah. of attention if somebody's putting it in the dryer. Right. <laughs> uh -huh. So they all. I don't think they had the turkey that that okay, Thanksgiving. I don't think so either. Mm -mm. But before we get away from this, mm -hmm. please give our listening or our viewer audience information about. Because you accept volunteers. You're looking for volunteers. Tell I, us a little bit about that. I am looking for volunteers to keep our loved ones comfortable, uh, to just hold their hands or read to them or open up their photo album and let them know that they are relevant. I am looking for nurses, always nurses, LPNs, Get your registered pencil and nurses, paper out. Okay, CNA. she's going to tell you. She's going to tell so you So give my office a call. My number is 708-825-1454. Again, 708-825-1454. And we are located at 16901 Dixie Highway, Suite B, Hazelcrest, Illinois, 60429. Now, we service Chicagoland area, so don't think we just service the south suburbs. We service the Chicagoland area, so that's Cook, Will, and DuPage County as well. Okay? You know, a lot of you out there, some of those, some of our listeners and viewers are there. So. Pass this word along to what it is. We're going to repeat it one more before we sign off today. Okay. 708-825-1454 is our number. What I want to remind our, our listeners and our viewers is that what we want for our octogenarians like me and the septenarians, mm -hmm. we want them to live and know they should live with dignity. <clears throat> yes. With respect. They should know that they are elders and not necessarily elderly and the elders have a place in our society don't they yes they need to be valued they need to be valued they need to be cherished yeah. that's your wisdom oh, yeah. when we lose the elder you lose a whole set of encyclopedias i know i'm telling my age what but is it again encyclopedia <laughs> i can't ask you i, I grew on up TV. on encyclopedias right so when you lose a uh, uh, elder, they're the cornerstone yes. of your community. They're yes. the ones that sit in the window, watch you go back and forth to school. They're the ones that gave you a hat when you needed a hat and you, you might have left it at home. They're the ones that feed you. You lose an entire legacy when we lose an elder. I think about that many times when I talk to my other cousins and relatives uh, about what questions I wish I'd asked my daddy, my mama, about the family whether it's about anything growing up. And it could be about illnesses in the family. Exactly, and a lot of them take it to the grave. Yeah. So now we got this new technology, DNA swapping, mm -hmm. so you can find out what's in your, in your legacy, what's mm -hmm. in, your, in your genes. You had some tremendous story. You gotta tell this one story about the young bride. <gasps> Oh, Tell me the story about the young bride. This is my favorite story. I had, um, and I hope she's listening, I had a senior. She took care of her mother for 20 years. She was 77 years old, and her mother was 97 years old. Mm -hmm. And we do caregiver support. And she said, Miss Bird, you know, I've been taking care of my mother for so long, and I'm honoring my mother. I want to get married. She so what? Get, she wants they to get married. She's 77. Okay. And I said, you want to get married? Wait a minute, she's younger than me. Mm. 
Oh, excuse me. <laughs> she, go, she's taken now. Oh, she's taken already. She's All right. Taken. <laughs> I don't have a shot there. And so, you know, I brought in the social workers uh -huh. and the chaplains and myself, and we went over what do you have to offer? Because she's not seeking to be mailed, uh, made whole. She was already whole. So she did everything, wrote the vision, made it clear. She wasn't a cougar, right? No, she, she wasn't a cougar. All right, I just want to be mm -mm. sure. So anyway, after that, her mother unfortunately died in September 2020. I received a call February the 14th, 2021, saying, I's married now. She had the blue rings sparkling, huh? Okay. 70, so she was 78 years old. Uh -huh. After taking care of her mother for 20 years, she was blessed to get married. So there is a life. For my caregivers, know that there is a life after you take care what of about your take, loved Yeah, one. that's it, taking care of those caregivers. And right. they should not feel guilty. No. What are some of the common things that the caregivers forget and, and don't do like this young lady did? They forget themselves. They got to take time to breathe. They got to okay. take care of themselves, making sure that they're eating right, they're healthy. They got to make sure they get a vacation, a break. Yes. Okay, because uh, when you're taking care of somebody ill, I've seen it quite a few times where the caregiver might go before, before the, patient. the patient they were taking care of. Exactly. And all because they didn't take some time they didn't for take care of themselves. to renew themselves too. They need renewal too, right. I'm sure of that. Right. So there's a lot of education out here. There's a lot of books out here oh, for caregivers. Look at this one. You're going to find out some more about this in our next episode. A book called, Oh My God, I'm the Growing Up, A Conversation on Giving Care to, be, to Loved Ones and Yourself is by Cheryl Yarbrough, Ph.D. out of Spelman. Those Spelman folks, Morehouse folks, folks down in Atlanta. That's where you came out. Right? Yes, okay. I went to Clark Atlanta University. Sissy. <laughs> All right. We had to get those commercials in for yeah. the school. That's where more people like you are coming from. They have that care and empathy, mm -hmm. et cetera. I wish you could tell some stories about you being an Army brat, but you kept those stories from me. Yeah, I'm a squid. I'm a squid. What does squid stand for? It's a uh, Navy. Your parent, Navy. one of your parents, was in the Navy, and you travel around around the world. Mm -hmm. What was your just out of care? What was your favorite landing spot? Japan. Japan. Why Japan of all places? Well, it was a it was a cultural um, it was a cultural epiphany. Uh -huh. um, things we eat here, they don't mm -hmm. they eat something totally different over there. The land is beautiful, absolutely beautiful. Their culture mm -hmm. is with the kimonos and the samurais, it's absolutely telling, beautiful. Uh, Imani, Rosie, you're telling me to wrap up? Okay, we got to wrap up. See you next Thursday. Come get on at 6 o'clock, and you'll find out more about us, too, by going to the YouTube. Look for uh, Black Star Still Rising, and okay. you'll see this whole telecast you can share with your friends. Thank you for being with us today. Thank you. Folk, you. Wave, at, wave at the folks at the, at the, uh, the Atlas Center on Quigir. Okay. Hope to see you next week. Thank you for your time with us. I'm so glad that we had a chance to. I am. Okay. This was enjoyable. Well, thank you so much. And I have to shout out to my friend at the Croc Center. Darlene uh, Humphrey. Ms. Humphrey, who recommended you, and also Mr. Uh, Othell Owen uh, from the Congressman uh, Jackson's office, Constituent Services. Those are the rest of the shout outs I had to give, and I think I got them in before the time. I wasn't sure. I did have enough time for that. So thank you. We're fading out.